thy friends despise for part of the song I want to read just because it just kind of hit me a little different it says oh what peace we often forfeit there's a peace that we so often forfeit and oh what needless pain we bear there's a pain that there's a pain that we don't have to bear and there's a pain there's a peace that we're dismissing and the reason is because we do not carry everything to God in prayer so I just, I just felt like that was just a nice transition as we go into a time of praying. And so I encourage you to keep that just in mind. What pain are you holding on to and what peace are you refusing not to take? Um, just keep that in mind as we go into a, a, a time of uh, prayer. Again, you can pray with somebody in the room. You can pray with someone next to you. You can pray by yourself. But just take this next couple minutes and pray. And then uh, we'll begin. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we take some time to go through Scripture, 
Uh, I just want to pray that by your grace and mercy, you may speak to us, speak to our hearts. Um, strengthen us, Father, that we may be able to best represent you to the world. And that on the inside as well, we may experience some peace. Lord God, I just want to thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. May we hear your voice as we go through your word. As I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Solid. We're ready to get into this. You guys ready? So the class for today is Patience 101. Uh, and you know what's interesting? Uh, this is just kind of like some pre-stuff before we start diving in. Uh, but this word kind of popped in my head because I was going to go a different direction. Um, it popped in my head and as it popped in my head, I was like, what am I going to talk about when it comes to patience? <laughs> I was like, I don't even know what to say when it comes to patience, right? Um, I have a lot of friends uh, tell me like, man, Samson, you're really patient. You know, like they'll, they'll tell me that. And I was like, I mean, I guess maybe some days more than others. Um, but what was really interesting is as I began to kind of just dive into and go this, down this direction, it was a rabbit hole that went deep, a lot deeper than I even thought that it was going to go. And so the stuff that I'm going to share with you, it may, I mean, it may be a lot, maybe a little. I didn't know kind of how to start, how to end, because there's just so much stuff. But this is just kind of stuff that has inspired and has strengthened and has brought clarity to my mind when it comes to patience more than I can imagine. And my hope and my prayer is that it's going to be a blessing for you guys as well, because it was, it was a tremendous blessing for me. So when we're talking about patience, um, there's a specific uh, a text in the Bible that I think is very, very important when it comes to this, uh, uh, this whole conversation, and it's how God describes himself. And God describes himself in Exodus chapter 34, uh, verses 6, right? And this is uh, when, when, when uh, Moses is asking um, to see uh, God's glory, he says, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to declare my name to you, right? He's going to proclaim his name to, to, to Moses. And the reason this is so significant is because names had such a deep root, right? Uh, for the Hebrews, they understood when you understand somebody's, root, uh, somebody's name, you understand their origin. You understand everything about them. Right? You understand uh, the situation that they maybe were born into, right? And so when, when God says, I'm going to proclaim my name to you, this is significant. It's not just something on the low end. This is something that's significant. And this is the way that God describes himself. When he's like, okay, I'm going to think of the way to describe myself. or I'm going I'm to I'm I'm proclaim my name to, to Moses so he can know who I am. And so... He says, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. And uh, when we look at that word long-suffering, some translations say patience. Some translations say patience, right? And, and so when you're thinking about the word uh, long-suffering and you're thinking about the word patience, is there a difference? Is there a difference between being long-suffering and being patient? And this is kind of the rabbit hole <laughs> that I began to go down, right? Like when God says he's patient or when God says that he's long-suffering, really what is God saying? And then what is he saying when it comes to this whole topic of patience? Because if there's a difference between long-suffering and patience, uh, what is that different? What does it look like? And, and why did he choose to say one versus the other? So, in order to understand this, we're going to have to go into some Greek. Amen? Uh, we, that's the only way we're going to be able to do this. We've got to go into some Greek. Uh, so uh, there is a difference between patience and long-suffering. Now, in the English language, when we use patience, we may stretch that word, right, just by the use and how we use it and how we want to use it. But there's a, there's a clear line between patience and long-suffering when it comes to the Bible. In the Bible, the word for long-suffering is macrothymos. Can y'all say that? Macrothymos. Macrothymos. Macro, and it's two words. 
Macro means long or distant. All right? So take that, put that picture in your head. Macro means long or distant. Thymos means angry, heat, or passion. So when, when somebody is macrothymos, <laughs> that means their anger, their heat, their passion is far. It's distant. It's long, long. It's over there. Okay, so you got that picture in your head. So, so it means their anger, their, their passion, their heat, it's, it's over there. It's distant. Um, and then when you, tra- when you, when you, when you translate uh, uh, the, the word in patience, it's hypomeno. So when you look at the word hypo, it means under. And meno means to abide. So it means to abide under. And so when you're thinking of the words uh, 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 hypomeno, it's, it's to abide under, keeping yourself from. And now it might be like, oh, wait, that, <laughs> that sounds kind of similar, right? Because you're like, you're like macro, thymo, distant anger, keeping yourself under. Isn't that kind of semi-similar? I, I, I want to challenge us. When, when somebody is being patient, that means they're enduring something. Okay? They're enduring something. They're, they're, going, through, uh, uh, they're going through something and they're not crying. They're going through something and they're not sweating. They're going through something and they're not complaining. Right? There's this, there's this endurement that's happening. But when you're macrothymos, it means anger, passion, heat is far away from you. Think about it this way. Patience deals with situations. Long-suffering deals with people. Long-suffering deals more with, 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 with people. People get us fired up. People get us excited. People get us heated, passion, right? But when that passion, that heat is distant, it's far, that means you're long-suffering. And, so, and so, so think about it this way, right? Uh, uh, uh. When, 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 somebody, when somebody is in the middle of a conversation, right? Someone's in the middle of a conversation and, 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 and they're like, hey, let's go to McDonald's. And, on, and, and as they're trying to figure out how they're going to get there, one guy says, hey, we should go this way. Another person says, we should go that way. And, and, and you look and you see that clearly this is the, this is the simpler path. Clearly, if we go down this road, it's going to get us there faster. This guy's way is extremely long. And so he has an option. He can either be long-suffering, let the anger, the passion, the heat kind of be on the other side, or he can say, like, oh, I'm going I'm 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 to I'm let this thing rise up. <laughs> I'm going to explode. I'm going to make sure I get my, cross, my, my point across. Long-suffering is willing... To, to, to go alongside of the individual and put your heat somewhere else and go along with them. Now, and, and, and I, I wrote this out because, because I, I, I felt like I might get this tongue-twi- tongue-tied, but a person that is patient can be long-suffering, right? If the, a patient person can also be long-suffering. But just because a person may be long-suffering doesn't, doesn't mean they're patient. It's like I might be able to endure something with a person, but if I'm going through some situations, I can't, I can't handle it. If I'm going through some trials, I can't handle it. But I might be able to endure a person, right? And, so just, and, and we're going to go through some verses so that you can see, so that you can see it for yourself. Because uh, once you start going through some verses, it'll start to make sense. And so I'm going to just shout out these verses so, so you can get them ready. James chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22, Romans chapter 5, verses 4, and 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 4. And again, long-suffering versus patience. So starting off in James chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, 
It says, do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. This is, this is, this is the verse that is, is, is being presented, right? And so when you go to verses 10, it says, my brethren, take the, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of the suffering and patience. Which one do you think this is? Patience, long suffering? 50 50, right? So, so, so uh, 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 if you go to the previous verse, uh, verses 9, it, it kind of gives you that little, that little preview of what this, is, this one is about. It says, don't grumble against one another. Right, so don't 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 grumble grumble against one another. So this is an idea of 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 dealing with other people. So if it's dealing with other people, then when we jump down to verse ten, we know that this is dealing with long suffering. This is dealing with long. <laughs> this is dealing with long suffering, right? And uh, the next verse, Galatians chapter five, verses twenty-two. This is the, dealing with the fruits of the Spirit, right? So it says, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So just from, just, from, just from reading the fruits of the Spirit, right? Thinking in the context that this is the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, 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 what do you think the long-suffering is dealing with? Do you think it's long-suffering or do you think it's patience? We got patience. Any other thoughts? Fruits of the Spirit. What is it dealing with? <laughs> right? So, so, so when you're thinking fruits of the Spirit, all of these fruits of the Spirit typically deal with other people, right? <laughs> so, so, so fruits of the Spirit typically deal with other people. So as this is dealing with other people, we know that this is talking about long-suffering. And so, uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 4, and, and we're probably going to come back to this verse, but Romans chapter 5, verses 4, it says, and perseverance, right, this is the word we're looking at, uh, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, if you know this verse, and you know what comes before, you know what comes after, then you know what, you, you might have an idea of which one this is talking about when it says Perseverance. Right? It's talking about patience, right? Because in the previous verse, it talks about uh, that we glory in tribulations because tribulations produces patience and patience, character and character, hope. So, so this is an example of patience. And so I have one more. Uh, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading in verse 4. And it says, but in all things, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulation, in needs, and in distress. So, so is this talking about long-suffering, or is this talking about patience when it mentions patience here? Long-suffering? <laughs> right? Because it says, it says, we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, is it, it's dealing with patience, right? Because, because this is talking about situations. Tribulations is a situation. Needs, a situation. Distress, a situation. And so after kind of reading these, and, 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 and maybe you got an idea of it. Maybe, you, maybe, maybe the, <laughs> it wasn't most clearly explained. But, but what is it that you struggle with? It might be both. It might be patience, right? It might be long-suffering. And it's interesting, for myself, as I began to chew on this and as I began to just kind of focus in on this, I, I began to realize it's like, I'm better with, I'm better with patience, <laughs> you know, like at least for myself. Like when people have examined my life, they're like, man, you're so patient, man. You're so, you're so this and that. Like if I had to choose between long-suffering and patience, which one this person was talking about, every time it's like, it's patience. Like, I'm not long-suffering as much as I think, right? 
like there's, there's moments where I don't let my anger be distant. There's times when I kind of want to hold on to it. And so when, when, when we're talking about, you know, patience 101, I'm, I'm really calling us to examine ourselves and ask ourselves the question, which one of those is it that we struggle with? Or maybe it's both. And so uh, the, the rabbit hole roughly got me to this end, right? And I just, I just sat there and I was like, man, God, this is tough because now I kind of see the situation, but how exactly do I actually grow? Like, 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 if they're different, if they're truly different, then the remedy kind of has to, has to fit each situation, right? Like, if, if, if patience is more dealing with my situations, right, if it's more dealing with the, the, the journey and the process and what I go through, uh, what's the remedy for that? Or, if long-suffering is this idea of dealing with, with people, with individuals, and and things uh, making me upset, whether that individual is my spouse, whether that individual is my children, whether that individual is God, right? Like we maybe just this flame burst with God. How, how, how does that get worked out? Because that's the real question, right? We want to grow. We don't just want to know that, you know, we suck. <laughs> that's, not, that's not fun. We don't want to just know that, like, we're horrible individuals and we struggle. No, we want to know what's, what's the answer, God? How are you going to get us from from where we are to where you're calling us to be. Because that is the character of God, right? The character of God is this long-suffering. And maybe you've experienced in, in, in your life where God has been extremely and amazingly patient with you, but, but, but today we're going to look and see what the remedy is. And so what we're going to begin with is long-suffering. Long-suffering. When it comes to dealing with others, how do we grow our patience uh, when it comes to people? Because sometimes, especially when, when, when a person uh, uh, says something that is mean or that's rude, sometimes we want to hold on to the anger because we feel like we, we deserve to, right? Like, like, like he just said something that's mean. Why should I not hold on to my anger, right? Or maybe when something doesn't go our way, right? Like it's like, oh man, I should hold on to my anger because like, man, I worked hard for this. Like how come it didn't go the way I thought it would, right? And so, and so we want to hang on to the anger or maybe uh, somebody did something they're not supposed to do. There are children, our grandchildren, maybe something happened with, with our parents. And so we just feel like we own the anger, like we're allowed to be angry. But, but, but I'm here today to, to tell us including myself, like, oh, God is making a call to separate ourselves from it. To separate ourselves from it. And this is not a situation where I'm saying to invalidate anyone's feelings. All right, I'm not, that's not the direction I'm going. It's not a call to in, invalidate your feelings. It's, it's a call uh, that God is placing on your heart to, to move in a direction that's more in his image. All right? And so if you're experiencing anger, it's cool. But we're we going to go to the Word and see how exactly we can, we can grow from it. Because we don't want to grow in our anger. We want to grow from our anger. Amen? So uh, 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 there's, there's a verse in the Bible that also brings up this patience. Uh, and again, we're talking uh, uh, about the patient, uh, the word hypomeno, right? Or, I'm sorry. No, we're not talking about patience. We're talking about slow to anger. So uh, the Marco Thymos, right? Um, there's another place where this is brought up. Marco Thymos, and it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Some of you guys might know where we're going. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4. And this is that uh, Mark, Marco Thymos. Said it like said it like ten fifteen times before I came out here, and I'm still struggling with it. Marco Thymos, we gonna get it. Uh, so the verse says, "Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up." And I want to focus in on the very first part that love suffers long. Some translation says that love is long suffering. Some say love is patience, right? And so we know that this is talking about Marco Thymos. This is talking about a long suffering, right? And this is dealing with uh, uh, specifically people, right? Uh, so when it says love is patient, what it's really saying is 
Love is, is, is willing to put away its anger. Now, something that, that, that helps out is when the Bible says phrases like, blank is. That, oh, that helps us. Anytime you see any phrases in the word that says, uh, blank is blank, that helps us to know that there, there's a deep relationship between the two. Right? And so here, when it says love is, or love is long-suffering, or love suffers long, what we know is that when someone loves, they suffer long. They're long-suffering. They're patient with people. And that helps us because now we can look at, okay, if someone loves, then they're willing to suffer long. They're willing to be long-suffering. So now the issue or the thing that we have to focus on isn't the, the, the long-suffering anymore. Some of y'all might get where we're going with this. You see... Um, I don't, I don't know if anybody has been, has been, has been guilty of this, uh, and I'll throw myself in there, uh, but maybe you, you've ran across some difficult people in your life. And those individuals maybe didn't help when it came to long-suffering, right? Uh, maybe sometimes it just, you know, peaked, peaked your anger, peaked your passion, peaked uh, some of that heat, you know, got a little hot on your head, right? Um, and so what, what do we do when that happens? We go to God and we pray for patience. God, grant me patience. And then this is my favorite thing, right? Because people, people, people will pull this card on you. Well, you know, um, God is going to continue to bring that person into your life because that is the person that's building your patience. Right, and then they try to throw that on. They're like, "Oh, that person's building your patience. They're they're building your patience. They're building what God's trying to create in you." And 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 again, I'm not trying to dismiss that, but I am at the same time. So forgive me. Uh, but but I wanted to change the way we look at our prayers in that area. Maybe what we should be praying for, and this is kind of what God was speaking to me. He's saying. Samson, instead of just sitting there saying, God, give me patience. Oh, man, this person's going to continue to be in my life to, to build my patience, and I have to endure, and I have to endure. We're talking about the wrong type of patience here. <laughs> this, this isn't enduring, <laughs> right? Well, what we need to focus on isn't the patience. What we need to focus on is the love. Because love is patient or in, for the sake of this, I'm not trying to have anybody leave here and saying, I can't say patience anymore. I got to say love, long-suffering. No, you can still use patience. I just want us to make sure to know, to know there's a little difference here in long-suffering and patient. But instead of praying for that patience, because love is patient. Lo love is long-suffering. And so instead of me focusing, oh, I got to do long-suffering, long-suffering, and I, I got to be patient, be patient with this individual God's calling us to not focus on that, but focus in on the love. It's almost like trying to focus on doing the right thing, right? Focus on doing, focus on the law, focus on obedience, focus on all of this. God's like, no, 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 you need to focus on the love. Because as we focus on the love, the long-suffering comes naturally. The patience with the people in our lives come naturally. But we're not just going to stop there. <laughs> Because if we just stop, if we just stop, like, okay, you got to focus on the love. What does that actually practically mean? Because that's not helping anyone, right? So, so what does it actually practically mean to focus on the love? Uh, in First John chapter four, verses nineteen, it's one of my it's one of my favorite verses. A lot of my sermons kind of like, <laughs> I feel like it just kind of funnels back to First John chapter four, verses nineteen. Uh, and I think this is because it kind of helps us. Um, when it comes to all this, but First John chapter four verses nineteen, and this is this is this is one of my faves. It says, "We love him because he first loved us." The truth of the matter is, we will never be able to love if we do not understand 
how God has loved us. I'll put it in a different term. We will never be able to muster up the ability to be patient with someone, to be long-suffering towards somebody, if we don't recognize how God has been patient and long-suffering towards us. How many times have we gone to God and asked him for our inheritance, squandered it, and came back and he welcomed us? That is long-suffering. And so, and so I, I, I want to encourage us that if, and, and this is speaking to me because I already kind of put myself on blast that this is the area that God was like, okay, this, you might be patient, but you're not long-suffering as you think you are, right? And so what God was kind of speaking to me, and, and I kind of want to share with you, is if you do struggle with long-suffering, I want to encourage you to spend time truly understanding how God is long-suffering towards you. I'll tell you today, stop praying for patience. (laughs) You never thought I'd say that. It's all like, oh, shoot, wait, what? Yeah, no, stop praying for patience. And start examining how God has been patient with you. Start examining how God has been long-suffering towards you. Read the word and say, God, help me to see your love so that I can love. Because love is long-suffering. And when, we, when we're willing to take those steps to say, God, show me your love. Show me your love. Each day, every time you normally pray for patience, say, God, no, show me the love you have for me. Show me the patience you have towards me. Show me the long suffering that you have towards me. Then when you run into those individuals, all of a sudden it's going to seem like, oh, man, I don't know. But it almost seems I have this love inside towards you. So I'm going to be long suffering towards you. I'm going to be patient with you. And so that's dealing on the topic of long suffering. And so I want to encourage us, if that's, if that's you, because I put my hand up first, that's me. Uh, if that's you, I want to encourage you, again, study how God has loved you. Study how God has been patient with you, how he's been long suffering with you, how, how you've, you, know, you went this way when he told you to go that way. Uh, you were stubborn in this area and that area and he still unconditionally chased you and ran after you and brought you home. How he's done that for you, how he's done that for your family, what he's doing in your life. And that will create in you the love and the long suffering that you need towards others. So not talking about patience, right? And so this is dealing with the uh, hypomenos, uh, we're going to get it, right? Hypomenos, right? This, this aspect of, uh, uh, of abiding under. And so uh, in order for us to understand this, I want to take us to a verse, and this is in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. We read it earlier, um, and this is just going to help us get a little bit of our, our feet set in and understanding how we can grow when it comes to patience, and this is just, this is some really cool stuff. Um, so it says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And I love this next verse. It tells us, now hope does not disappoint. Amen? Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, just from reading this passage... A lot of times, and this was, my, this was my thinking when I first came to the passage, and I was like, this doesn't really quite make sense. But a lot of times we think tribulation produces patience. From this verse, that's what it said. Tribulations produces patience, and patience, character, and character, hope. And so that's what, that's what gives us the ability to endure any situation that we're in. Tribulations. How, how, how exciting is that? Right? Like, like, who wants to grow their patience in the room? Tribulation, 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 tribulation. Everybody tribulation, tribulation for everybody, right? Now, that doesn't, that doesn't sound good. 
And some people would say, it's not supposed to sound good. It's like, okay, hold on. We serve a mighty God, amen? And, 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 and I'm here to tell us that it's not the tribulation. We, we kind of had it wrong. Um, it's actually the hope. It's actually the hope. And some people would be like, wait a second, the hope's at the end. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's all like the hope comes after the character. Like we know we read the verse just now. Um, actually, the hope uh, came first in verse one. If we go back in verse one or verse two, actually. But it says, therefore, having been justified, you can go back to verse one. Having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So he just set the stage. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And then it continues on, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice. Why are we rejoicing? We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We are rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. This is where it's at. It's, it's, it's the hope of the glory of God. Like, like we have a hope. Now going into verse 3, and not only that. <laughs> so this is, this is the second. This isn't, this isn't the beginning. This is the second. He says, we have this hope in the glory of God. This is not only that, but now because we have that hope, because that hope exists, we can now also glory in tribulations. Because we have that hope, we can glory in tribulations. Why? Because as we go through those tribulations, it's going to develop our patience. And, and, and as we develop our patience, it's going to develop our character. And our character, that hope that I talked about in the beginning. All right, some of y'all may need another verse because you'll be looking at me like, wait, what? Uh, so we're going to go to Romans chapter 8, verses 25. Um, Romans chapter 8, verses 25. It says, but if we hope for what we do not see, right? Because it's talking about hoping. We've got to hope for something that we, 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 we don't see. It's not about hoping for something that we do see. And that's what it says in verse 20, 24, right? It says, like, there's no point in hoping for something that you do see. You see it. Why would you hope for it? There's no point in it. But we, right? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. We eagerly wait for it with patience. It's the hope of something that we don't see that gets us to eagerly wait with patience. I, I mean, I mean, you just imagine, right? Like, 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 like a, a father coming to a child and saying, "Hey, son." Uh, I know that you've been wanting this basketball hoop and this basketball, and I finally raised enough money to get it. And I'm here to tell you that today, after school, we're going to the store to buy it. This kid will eagerly wait all day with patience. He's going to talk to his, kid, to his friends like, hey, man, my dad about to buy me this basketball hoop and this basketball, and we're going to play. You should come over. He'll endure anything throughout his day. It doesn't matter how tough the math class is. I'm about to play basketball. It don't matter how tough the gym class is. He'll run those miles and just be thinking, I'm about to play the basketball. It don't matter how bad lunch was. He don't care about that. What he cares about is I'm about to play basketball. And it's something that he cannot see yet. But it's the hope that gets him through whatever he's going through. And, and, and I'm here today to tell us that, like, when it, comes, when it comes to patience, if you want patience to endure, hope is what we're after. But there's even a process when it comes to hope, right? Because it's not just, you know, it's, you know if I just like, oh, hope, like, that's it, like, right? I just got to hope, you know, wake up in the morning and just hope for a good day. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's a little deeper than that. Because, you see, when it comes to hope, hope requires you believing. Your hope is nothing if you don't believe it, right? Somebody comes up to you 
hey, the president's coming to your house tomorrow. I don't believe that, <laughs> right? Sure, there might be hope, but you don't believe that hope, <laughs> right? Like, there, there's an aspect of believing the hope. Belief needs an aspect of trust. And it's hard to believe or to trust if you don't know the person who's making the promise. And so when we're thinking about enduring patient, or enduring, you know, enduring things and patience in that aspect, the situations, the question that is really posed isn't just, it's the hope that gets you through, but hidden behind that is the question of, do you know God? That's really the hidden question behind patience to be able to endure situations. Do you know God? Because if you know God, if you truly knew God, you'd trust him. And if you truly trusted him, you'd believe what he says. And you would hold on to that hope. But if you don't know him, then as you endure trials and tribulations, it's easy to let go. And so, really, when it comes to this aspect, right, when it comes to this hypomenos, it's, 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 a, it's a patience of enduring, but at the same time, it's the, the remedy for it is trusting God. The remedy for it is knowing God. So when we look at the first one, long-suffering, the remedy for that is seeing how God has loved you. That's what helps you to be, to be long-suffering towards others, knowing how God has, has loved you, how he's been patient with you, how he's been long-suffering towards you. And then on the other hand, when it comes to patience and enduring situations, tribulations, it's about knowing God. It's about knowing him. So if you're, if you're, if you're curious to know what I'm talking about, <laughs> this all leads down to one thing, if you've, if you've noticed, right? These are two different roads, obviously, but they go to the same house. Um, and that house is, is, is really knowing God and knowing how he loves you. When we talk about patience and patience 101, that's really where it all meets at. It all meets at knowing God and knowing how he loves you and spending time with him. If you feel in your heart that like, hey, look, I struggle with long suffering or I struggle with patience or maybe I just struggle with both and I need help in all these different areas. Uh, I'm here today to encourage you to not just pray for patience. I'm not saying don't pray for patience. You can. I'm not, I'm not saying not to. You can. But what I'm also saying is pray to ask God to just let, let you know him more. God, let me just see a little bit more behind the curtain to pray the same prayer that Moses prayed in Exodus chapter, in Exodus chapter 34. Moses was so captivated. He's like, God, I just want to know you. I just want to see you. And God's like, look, I'm going to proclaim my name to you. He said it. He's like, I'm going to proclaim my name to you. The prayer for all of us is to be able to just to be able to hear his name. God, just proclaim your name to me. Proclaim it to me. I need to know. I need to understand. When you find your patience wearing thin and you find your long suffering is not as long as you think it is, right? It's a little bit shorter, right? When you find yourself in these situations, don't beat yourself up, first of all, right? Don't, don't go home and just like, oh, man, I'm, I'm horrible. I'm trash. I can't do this. Don't do that. Instead, go home and say, God, today it was revealed to me that I don't know your name like I think I do. Because if I did, that wouldn't have been happening. Help me to see you more. And just like, just like he did with Moses, he's not going to hesitate. He's not going to hesitate. He's going to be, I'm going to do you one better. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how God's going to respond to that, right? I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to proclaim my name to you so that you can know it. And this is something that we have to do every day. So again, looking at this whole thing, patience 101, 
um, I just thought it was really cool that it kind of all kind of centered into like, yo, knowing God. And I think, I mean, that's the beauty. Even John chapter 17 verses 3 tells us, yo, this is eternal life, that they may know you. Like, that's eternal life right there. It all like kind of just centered down to that. And it was just beautiful to see. So I just want to encourage you guys, uh, encourage myself to really dive in, especially when we feel our patience running thin, not to beat ourselves up about the patience, but ah, I need more patience. I need more patience. No, what we need is to know God more. What we need is to know his name. Like, God, just reveal to me more of your name. And if we could do that, I can guarantee you that, that, that we'll be able to endure anything when it comes to patience. We'll be able to endure anyone, any group of people, long-suffering. And most importantly, we'll be able to just represent God's love more clear to the world. So if that's your prayer, uh, whether you're online, whether you're in the room, I just want to invite you to pray with me uh, that God can allow us to know him more and to be able to see and hear his name proclaimed. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, I just want to thank you so much. For many of us, uh, (laughs) we've probably adopted the mindset, and this is me included, that Oh, man, I need to go through more tribulations in order to grow my patience. (laughs) Um, But today uh, it was revealed that truly it's knowing you more. It's knowing your name that grows and develops, right? It's, 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 it's having that love in our hearts that's, that, that gives us the ability to be able to be long-suffering towards others, whether it's our kids, our spouse, whether it's our coworkers, whether it's other church members, God. And we pray that you may allow us to see the love that you have towards us, that we may be able to reflect that love onto others. And God, when we're enduring uh, situations, when we're enduring, enduring tribulations, help us, Father God, not to just say, oh, just more tribulations because I need to grow in my, in, my, in my patience. But instead, help us to say, no, it's about the hope that I'm able to endure this. It's about that hope. So help us, God, to be able to believe and trust you. And if we have struggles with that, help us to know you. So that by knowing you, we may be able to hold on to that hope even more firm. Lord God, we thank you. Lord, we love you. And we just ask that you may continue to make yourself known to us. It's our prayer in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. I was just going to say, uh, this Sabbath, uh, feel free to join us, whether it's live or whether it's in the room. And uh, there's going to be the cooking class taking place um, 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on Zoom. Feel free to connect and get the login information. We'll get you all hooked up. And then next week, we're going to have the uh, Bible study seminars beginning on Monday. So we'd love to see you. We'd love to see you there. Stay blessed. Have an awesome week.